just going over a few things, some stuff I was playing with here. One was the ability to load PNGs, this little thing here, um, with the alpha active. So you can actually have a transparent spot or degrees of transparency in your GUI, which is kind of nice. So be making some icons and stuff with those later. You all remember uh, this control here where you can manipulate um, directly either by entering a value. Um, one of the things uh, I've shown you before are these wonderful scrollers, and, or these knobs, and their ability to affect things. Let's just get that turning. Now the lock, I have the rotation lock built in. Just if you lock it, it takes the control over from the auto rotate back to whatever the value in here was set. I've got to do some more uh, callbacks underneath. Um, this isn't really hooked to drive anything just yet. Um, I made a mistake in the callback, so I'm going to have to redo that. Um, again, some of this stuff isn't flushed out yet. Uh, this part is. Just get that back to default. Now, um, this is going to be the home of the menu and status stuff. Um, there was some memory information going to be put here, but there was a couple snags that I hit with large memory. And then I'll go back and do that. As you can see, these items down here populate as the mouse moves around. The FPS is true because it's not throwing any extra polygons on the screen, drawing any text. Uh, just a nice little trick here. Count your CPUs, and then that's your actual CPU usage. And uh, it's all programmed to update once a second except for the mouse position, it updates and change. Now, some new things here. There's the ultra-thin scroll bar I tried. I set it to five pixels wide, and it's attached to the mouse wheel. Um, it automatically adjusts to the size of this. Kind of like how the panes in P3D1 work, except this is all automatic for me. I didn't have to do anything except for code one little color. So then I got to playing with what a uh, tree view might look like. I don't have any icons built for it, but if you'll notice, the, uh, the wires and whatnot are working. Now, trees have a neat thing in that um, they will automatically generate the up-down, the vertical scroll bar when needed. But the class, and I didn't really want to edit the FLTK class to add a horizontal scroll bar, I uh, instead manipulate one of their properties, which is their ability to adjust the left and right margin. And I've attached it to a roller. So as you see here, I can force whatever view. And to reset, I need a little button that simply resets it. Now the other neat thing about that button, it's on a callback. So that button shuts off if you happen to be on it there. There we go. The button will automatically go gray if you've adjusted the roller there anyway. So that's just how the callbacks work. So if you were to, say, open something nice and wide like this, maybe you want to be able to scroll over. Um, let's just open. So there's a big ship. Zip out. Um, that was done by a friend of mine, Ozzy Lot. But more so, uh, what I wanted to see here was the... Uh, well, that was interesting. It didn't refresh. Normally that redraws, but... Um, what we've done here is the root has been renamed to the name of the file just for fun. It's quite a long, quite a long name, you see. Now normally you're not going to get uh, that kind of, you're not going to run into that kind of need of, of a long name. Usually your stuff is only going to be three or four steps deep with simple names. But the idea here is simply that if you did want to adjust your uh, your horizontal, it's just on a nice little roller at the bottom. Two simple views. Uh, see that I've duplicated the menu in a few places just to, as a placeholder while I work on uh, while I work on it. Now, when the menu bar is active, it freezes everything else. Put back into the regular window. Um, 
notice the menu also opens directly over top of the 3D. That was done using some couple little tricks in the, uh, in the coding of this. Now, if I can go here, chest piece or something. Ah, well, let's do this. Entities. And then back, but I haven't gone into reading any child entities. There's no, um, I haven't done the recursive stepping, so obviously there's more going on there. I'm going to program the recursives later. Anyhow, just wanted to go over a couple of quick things. Um, these dials are not going to be staying. There's good old Frank. That's my old test to make sure that the view viewport resizes. Let's see if I just maximize here for a second. So, yeah, the uh, user interface will go full screen. No problem. Um, later there's going to be a little button here and a button somewhere on the side which will allow us to uh, hide your, your side panes as needed and uh, split view in the 3D to allow you to have more than one camera and view active at one time. I actually considered doing it in more than one window and when I tested it, there seemed to be less of a frame, a speed, or a FPS hit by doing it inside the one 3D window, so I'll probably do it that way. Um, and again, just really wanted to uh, go over this nice little uh, tree view here. If you notice, that's FLTK sharing the uh, processing time. See that? <laughs> As I'm updating things, it kind of tries to share with the 3D. <laughs> you know, frames, FPS is still pretty darn good. But the, uh, the rotation that's there is non tween so it's not perfectly smooth. It's actually relative to the number of cycles, so the number of FPS. Anyhow, um, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, thanks for watching.